What's going on all my YouTube buddies? It is me, Jacob, with another video. Continuing on in my series of the classic Universal Monster films. Today's video is Frankenstein. So if you're new to my YouTube channel, besides movie reviews, I also do TV reviews, trailer reactions, vlog videos, ranking videos, and other fun stuff along the way. If you enjoyed this video, consider clicking that subscribe button and the little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I will leave a link down in the description below for my previous review on Dracula. So Frankenstein, like Dracula, was released in 1931 and the two films set the benchmark for the modern horror genre and it set Universal up as the studio for the monster films. The film was directed by James Whale and in Frankenstein, medical student Henry Frankenstein, played by Colin Clive, pieces together salvaged body parts and brings a human monster to life, played by Boris Karloff, only to see his dreams shattered by his creation's violent rage. So my introduction to this franchise actually was Frankenstein, so I can't necessarily say I have nostalgia for this film because I didn't watch these films at a young age. I didn't, watch, I didn't get into these films until I was a teenager when I got into more of a wider range of film. But I say that because uh, Frankenstein, I think, is one of the best monsters in the classic monster lineup. Boris Karloff is so iconic in the role as the monster. I thought his height really fit the bill for that character because he is very imposing. The makeup is excellent. And he does a good job of playing the fine line between a vicious, savage monster, but there's also a human side to him. And we see a little bit of that in this film. It's explored a lot more in the sequel of Bride of Frankenstein, but you see a little bit of that in this first film, especially in the scene where he hangs out with a little girl who is the first character that did not see him as a monster, and, the fact, and we get to see that his tendencies get the worst of him let's put it that way <laughs> again I'm, I'm this will be a non-spoiler video this movie does succeed while i can't necessarily this film like with dracula i can't necessarily say that this film is scary like it was in 1931 i think in the modern age it still succeeds as an entertaining monster movie while also being a cautionary tale about bending the laws of nature, as we get to see with Henry Frankenstein, he's a mad scientist that wants to defy the laws of nature and try to create life through dead tissue. And Colin Clive's performance in this film, people don't talk about his performance that much compared to Boris Karloff, but he's excellent in this role. He really embraces the insanity of the character especially when he's creating dead tissue we see him going out at night dead bodies from the graves and his assistant the hunchback steals the brain from the lab the abnormal brain and then, and then you get to see the madness of it too because when the creature comes to life in that famous line he goes it's alive it's alive and people forget the line he says afterwards now i know how it feels like to be god and yeah definitely an insane character and he pulled it off so well also interesting is several supporting actors that were in the previous film dracula have supporting roles in this film because they're, they're excellent, and it's nice to see him in multiple films playing different characters. Uh, Edward Van Sloan, who played Van Helsing in Dracula, plays the professor in Frankenstein, the one whose brain got stolen from. And he has a great role in this. I definitely enjoyed his character. And Dwight Fire, who plays Mr. Renfield in Dracula, plays the hunchback assistant. Fritz? It's weird because everybody says Igor, but his character's name is Fritz in this film. Yeah, apparently Igor didn't come until much later. 
<laughs> I find that crazy. But obviously he's awesome as Mr. Fritz. He's like the bumbling, hammy assistant. He's kind of the one that causes Frankenstein to get in trouble because he steals the wrong brain. Like, also, the production design of this film, like with Dracula, is outstanding. It is awesome seeing these classic monster films with high definition because they look good for its time. They go all out with impressive, extravagant sets, along with a dark, gothic atmosphere. And you get to see the groundwork for what Universal fully embraces in the movies down the line with these two films. And again, the makeup for this film is outstanding as well, especially on the Frankenstein monster. You can buy Boris Karloff as a monster when you see this film. And you can see how this is the film that shaped the leg that made Boris Karloff an icon and it is the movie that people remember him the most obviously being the Frankenstein monster but like with Dracula I don't think it's a perfect film again I don't think this film is scary as it was back in 1931 I can see why people were scared of this film in 1931 this was a movie ahead of its time like Dracula was I think the themes in Dracula are a little more cautionary than they were in Dracula. I think Dracula, you can suspend some disbelief a little bit with it dealing with vampires, but this is a movie about a mad scientist creating life out of dead tissues, and the cautionary tale is, You're not God, don't try to be him! I can see people getting a lot out of that film because of that. But watching it now, some of the kills are very tame in today's standards. I get it, they were scary at the time, especially the scene with the little girl. If I was an audience member and saw that in 1931, I would probably be traumatized by that scene. In fact, it was so controversial that for a lot of releases when the Hays Code was implemented, uh, that scene was often censored. Thank God we have the uncut version now. Uh, and then there's another character that's killed off off camera at the beginning, and I don't really think it was handled very well. Especially, uh, it's brought up in a weird way. I didn't really like that, but there's two kills in the film that are very effective. Uh, my, my, my other issues with the film, uh, they, do a, they have a weird focus in the first half of the film on Henry's dad and I don't really like that character I I think the character is very annoying he adds nothing to the film and I don't really get why there's a whole segment focused on his dad it doesn't really help with the pacing of this film like with Dracula the movie has little to no score the, there's only music played during the opening and closing titles and also during a scene at a wedding festival the rest of the movie has no music and like with dracula that is a blessing and a curse during intense moments of the film the, uh, the lack of score does add a little bit of dread to the conflict but like i said but there's so, some aspects of the movie where i think the lack of score kind of weakens attention the like there's this one scene in particular towards the end where the mob goes after the Frankenstein monster and there's a few minutes of just them walking around and there's nothing. I think them marching would have been more epic with music, honestly. And unlike Dracula, however, there is no alternate cut of Frankenstein with a music score. I did finally see the alternate cut of Dracula with the music score. And while the score itself, I guess, was a mixed bag in general, because I feel like they it did drown out some of the dialogue, which I thought was a little disappointing, the scenes that needed the score the most, I think, were more effective, especially the scene where Dracula tried to hypnotize Van Helsing. That was, like, the most awkward scene in that film without the score. It'll be curious what happens if somebody does an alternate cut of Frankenstein with a score. We'll see how that goes. And my other issue with the film is the final scene of Frankenstein is awful. I'm just gonna put it there. Uh, I love the climax of Frankenstein and the windmill. That final encounter with 
Frankenstein and his creation is excellent. I love that scene. But just the scene that happens afterward, where it's again focused on his dad, it was the laziest way you could go out on this film. Uh, again, I, I don't really want to dive deep into heavy spoilers, but uh, it does feel like an alternate ending you'd see on the deleted scenes in a lot of modern DVDs. And it adds nothing to the film. It lacks the ambiguity that the previous scene left. And also, it, if you watch this film and Bride of Frankenstein back to back, that final scene really messes up the continuity of both films, so I don't really get why the scene was placed. I guess to try to give comfort to traumatized viewers is the only logical explanation I think was why they had it there, but I'm sorry, that final scene, I've hated it ever since I first saw the film. It is the lamest way you could go out on Frankenstein, but I do enjoy this film. I actually like it a little bit more than Dracula. I think mainly due to Boris Karloff's performance alone and Colin Clive, I think the acting is a step above some of the more hokey acting that you see in Dracula. I think even Edward Van Sloan is better in this film than he was as Van Helsing. There, there are some flaws, but I think at the end of the day, both this and Dracula did set the benchmark for horror films, and obviously, without the classic monster franchise, we wouldn't have the huge horror landscape that we have today, so they should be commended for that. Unlike with Dracula, it is hard rating this film because if we're going on cultural impact, five stars, but because I do have personal issues with certain things as a modern film goer. My final rating is my is my personal ranking of the film. And like Dracula, I'm going to give Frankenstein 4 out of 5 stars. And on the 100 point scale, I'm giving the film a 77 out of 100. I will say the direction is better in this film in Dracula. There are some excellent shots that James Will composed in Frankenstein. I think better so than in Dracula. So I think that's why, that's partly why I think Frankenstein is a more entertaining film than Dracula. Dracula had some slow, awkward moments in there. And Frankenstein is a step up, so that's a good thing. So that wraps up my review of Frankenstein, the second installment in my series of the Universal Classic Monsters franchise. If you missed my April Blu-ray on video, I ordered the complete 30 film collection. It is an amazing set. I love the packaging. I like how each disc represents each monster. Like we have, you have the Dracula, you have all the Dracula films here. You have the Frankenstein films here, Mummy films, the Wolfman films, and I can't wait to go through all these films. So we've done Dracula and Frankenstein. Join me in the next video in this series where I'll be tackling the original Mummy, uh, another classic monster that Boris Karloff played. I can't wait to share that review with you guys. So if you have seen the original Frankenstein, please let me know down in the comments below what you thought of the film. Did you love it? Did you hate it? Were you mixed on it? Any comments that I get in any of my videos, if they're respectful, I will share them in upcoming comment shoutouts. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. Click the subscribe button to see more content and a little notification bell next to it to be notified of future videos. I have some more videos planned for you soon. I hope you all have an amazing day. God bless and I will see you next time. Goodbye!